Hello and a very warm welcome to worship for this Sunday, 7th of February, from both Caris and from me. We begin by singing oh, Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. Let us pray. We echo the sentiments of the psalmist, O God, how lovely is your dwelling place. Our souls long for the courts of the Lord. We lament the inability to gather and worship, kept away from our buildings and each other in the name of safety, life and hope. We do this, of course, yet there remains a yearning in our souls. Remind us that your dwelling place is larger than our buildings, for you make your home in the beauty and wonder of creation all around us. You long to dwell at the very heart of our being. Give us the courage we need to find and gently remove all the unhelpful ideas, superstitions and beliefs we have about you. Open us up that such notions may rise to the surface so we may notice them for what they are. Distractions on our journey to the heart of holy relationship, previously helpful perhaps, but now surplus to requirements. Give us the faith 
to let such things go. Knowing that we might be saying goodbye to something, but in doing so we gain space in our lives for a greater awareness of your presence. Help us to hear the same psalmist say, Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the highways to Zion. And to know that we need not go anywhere in order to encounter you, O Lord God of hosts, our strength, sun and shield, to whom be glory and honour for ever. Amen. We are two weeks away from Lent, which means that next Sunday it will be Transfiguration Sunday. It is always Transfiguration Sunday, the week before we start Lent. So this week I'm using the readings for the presentation of the Lord to the Temple, the presentation of Jesus by Mary and Joseph 40 days after he was born. They're probably not the readings that most other people will hear this week. But I thought it would be interesting to hear and think about the readings from when Jesus was just 40 days old and revealed as a Messiah to an old man named Simeon. And then also to see what it might be to see Jesus transformed, transfigured on the mountain top. And what these two bookends of Jesus' life might say to us as we enter into the journey of Lent for 2021. We begin by hearing from the prophet Malachi, read for us by Bob Sutherland. The Lord Almighty answers, I will send my messenger to prepare the way for me. Then the Lord you are looking for will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger you long to see will come and proclaim my covenant. But who will be able to endure the day when he comes? Who will be able to survive when he appears? He will be like strong soap, like a fire that refines metal. He will come to judge like one who refines and purifies silver. As a metal worker refines silver and gold, so the Lord's messenger will purify the priests, so that they will bring to the Lord the right kind of offerings. Then the offerings which the people of Judah and Jerusalem bring to the Lord will be pleasing to him as they used to be in the past. Amen. When Mary brought her treasure unto the holy place No human eye could make the joy upon her face. He was but six weeks old, her dearest joy and pleasure, her silver and her gold. Then Simeon on him gazing with wonder and with love, his aged voice upraising. Sweet release, for I my Saviour praising, may die at last in peace. And she, all sorrow scorning, rejoiced in Jesus' fame, the child her arms adorning, shone softly like a flame that burns the
time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the Lord required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to the people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. There was a very old prophetess, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel in the tribe of Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. When Joseph and Mary had finished doing all that was required by the law of the Lord, they returned to their hometown of Nazareth in Galilee. The child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom, and God's blessings were upon him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prophet Malachi wonders, who can endure the day when the Lord comes to the temple? Who can endure? It's not a very pleasant image or idea, is it? Enduring something. We don't often endure things we like. We endure long things, painful things, things we don't like. And then we get this scary image of fire melting down metal and fuller soap. Not nice soap, not good soap, but stinky, scrubby, fuller soap. I'm not sure many of us want to do that kind of enduring that kind of purification. And then we hear of Mary and Joseph going to the temple for the ritual of purification and for the dedication of their firstborn son, Jesus. The purification part of it was for Mary, 40 days after she gives birth in what is never a clean way she is required to follow the rules of purification. Such purification, whatever that ritual might have entailed at the time, seems a little bit less scary, a little bit less problematic than Malachi's vision of fire and soap and enduring. And yet this is the day. This is the day the Lord the child Jesus is brought to and presented to the temple. This is the day Malachi wants us 
to endure. As Mary and Joseph walked up to the temple, I wonder what they were thinking or experiencing or expecting. They won't have done this particular this particular ritual before. They will have done others, but not this one. This is their firstborn and they're doing it for the first time. But whatever they were expecting, perhaps they had seen others go through it, they weren't expecting, I don't think, Simeon and Anna to pop up, to appear in the temple. But it's these experiences and responses of Simeon and Anna that might help us rethink what we mean by purification. And then to aid in that thinking, I want us to use some artwork as well. In our first image, we see what is really quite traditional European artwork. Everyone is really quite staid. Jesus is quite clearly older than 40 days, but he's yet wrapped in swaddling cloths. I'm presuming this image is supposed to be of Simeon and he looks really quite stern. And maybe that's Anna, who looks a lot younger than our 80 odd years, but is dressed more like a nun. This is possibly the purification that we might come to mind when we think of Fuller's soap. But it's not an overly inspiring one. In our second image, there is again this image of a much older Jesus. But when you look at Simeon and Jesus' parents, gosh, they look depressed, don't they? They're glum. And their eyes are down and they look desperately sorrowful. There's that sense of purifying gold in the background, but our eyes are drawn down and our lips are as well. And so I was delighted to come across this image. This is just part of a piece of art, larger piece of artwork. But I've honed in on the bit that is of Jesus. And there's so much more joy involved, not just in the colours, but in the hands and the faces and those around them as well. This coming to the temple, this act of purification and faith, of dedication and hope, is a communal one. And it should bring us joy. Can our purification bring us joy? I particularly like this next image. It is much more rustic. It is taken as an interpretation. But I love the fact that there is this image of three generations delighting in the youngest, hands held out, eyes looking in expectation. Hope is coming. Just after Christmas, I discovered through social media a couple of images of Simeon and Jesus that I had not encountered before and they gladdened my heart and I share those with you now. The first shows great joy in Simeon's face and he is holding the child close in a way many of us would hold a child. Not at a distance, not with one hand, but holding them close to our chests. And in this final image that is reminiscent of icons, 
the tenderness and the desire and the deep joy that is in Simeon's face as he clasps the baby to his face tenderly is amongst the most moving things I have ever seen in artwork. When we think of purification, we probably think more of cold bath water, scrubbing brushes and stinky soap. We don't tend to think that purification can be done gently, with tenderness and joy and love. But that is exactly what God offers us. God is not here to scrub out our souls, to leave us with raw skin and painful hearts, but to tease out of us the divine image already implanted within us and to do so with grace and mercy and love. Such purification does require something on our part. But it is a call to the patient faithfulness of the man of Simeon and the prophet Anna that waits patiently and faithfully for that love to emerge in any shape or form and then to joyfully recognise it and proclaim it whenever we find it. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity to share a number of intimations with you. With the continued COVID restrictions, services for Sundays will continue to be recorded and available online until at least Easter Sunday. And if you're wondering, Easter Sunday is the 4th of April. If you know somebody who isn't online but might like a CD or DVD, please do get in touch with the man so we can make that happen. In the meantime, our night prayers continue every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9pm. You can access them via our Facebook or website. Um, and if you're not online, please be assured that you continue to be held in our prayers at this time. From Monday, this coming Monday, um, we will make available on the man's doorstep a number of things. One is free period products for those who might need them. I'm also going to make available a number of blessing cards if you would just like to have a little note of God's blessing for you. And we're also going to use some of our um, collection of books and jigsaws uh, available 
as a kind of library. And then we're aware that libraries and things are not open at the moment. Uh, charity shops aren't open at the moment. So if you have some books that you would like to donate, that would be wonderful. But actually, if you just need another jigsaw or a book to read, please feel free to come and pick them up from the man's doorstep. We're going to resurrect our virtual coffee mornings. They're going to happen on the second and fourth sun, uh, Saturday mornings via Zoom. Um, and so that will be this coming Saturday, which is the 13th, I believe, of February. Um, and if you want to join us, you don't actually have to be online. You can join us via the phone if you wish. Please be in contact and we will send out the details to join us. The communities team for Carnestie, Monifeith and the Sidlaws also have an online coffee morning or cafe every second Tuesday and they can also help you get online. So if you're not online and you would dearly love to be, they can help you. If that's something you're interested in, if you contact us at the Mans, we will pass on those details. And finally, I've mentioned Lent earlier, it starts with Ash Wednesday on the 17th of February. We'll give you a little bit more information on that in the coming week and next Sunday. But just to let you know that that's coming um, and uh, get it marked in the calendar and resources will become available within the next week. With all those intimations, we bring our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession before God. Let us pray. Patient purifier, we give thanks for the unwearying love you have for us, holding us gently and coaxing us persistently forward into your grace. Always ready to meet us, wherever we are, whatever we're facing. Thank you that we are never alone. We are thankful too for all that we have received and for all that we have been able to give. May you continue to bless us as we bring faith, hope and love to many homes, lives and communities around us. We pray for our world and its changing needs, for health and healing, for nourishment and generosity, for shelter and compassion, for laughter and love. In the life and work of the worldwide church and every community of faith where love is put into practice, may we set aside our theological differences and work together to bring hope to others. In the witness and ministry of Manifest Parish Church, we pray that our small acts of kindness, connection and love will bring relief and hope to our neighbours. The Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. We pray for every nation of the world, running the race against COVID-19, juggling also the monster of climate change and the unjust gulfs between richest and poorest. We pray for the various leaders and advisors in our own country that wisdom, insight and humility will abound, not just for the sake of our fellow countrymen, women and children, but for every citizen of planet Earth. O Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. We pray for the youngest and the oldest in our communities in so many ways, bearing the heaviest burden of our current restrictions. We pray for them and all who work to support them. We offer to your care the communities of Seaview Primary, Grange Primary and Monifeith High Schools, for South Grange, Tynamurn and St Mary's, for Tullis House and Servite House. Our Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. We pray for places of violence and unrest, across oceans and behind closed doors. We pray for Myanmar, India, Central African Republic, Yemen, Somalia. For those persecuted in China, North Korea and Afghanistan. For all having to flee their homes in a bid to find a place of safety. O oh Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. We pray today for our homes and all the people we hold dear. We wish them only health and goodness, peace and joy. We also pray for the people we struggle to love. 
May we all grow in openness and humility, striving always to see your divine spark in the other. O Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are grieving today, those who are nearly bereaved and those whose loss has been forgotten by everyone but them. We commend to your care, especially right now, Carol, Tracy and Neil. As we give thanks for all the people of faith who have gone before us, we pray for all those who will take their last breath today and every baby who will take their first. O Lord God of hosts, hear our prayer. O Lord God of hosts, hear all our prayers as across time and space we echo the prayer of Jesus from centuries ago. Our Father, you art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Unlike most of the hymns that have been recorded for us since March last year, my voice is in this final hymn. And that's only because it was recorded for Songs of Praise a number of years ago in Truro Cathedral. You don't get to spy me in this clip, but you do get to join with us all in singing Fairest Lord Jesus. As we continue to live through a time of separation and anxiety, remember that God is ever present in your lives. You need only be attentive enough, open enough, humble enough to recognise the love and grace that has always been there. May you have the faith to walk this way in the week ahead. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all those whom you love this day 
and forevermore.